You ain't got to tell them something. I don't take time. I don't need you to tell me to get in shape. I stay in shape. Why? Because even though I don't play professional basketball anymore, I'm still a former pro. I can get in the gym and make three or four hundred shots in about 45 minutes on my own with nobody rebounding the ball. Why? It's a habit. I'm never going to play basketball again professionally, but I do it because it's part of my discipline and my training. Part of your discipline and your training right now at your age is take care of your business in school, take care of your business in your family as a son or a brother. People should be cleaning up behind you. You should be making your bed. You should be being a blessing to whoever is entrusted with taking care of you, mother, grandmother, aunt, uncle, whoever it is. You should be respectful to all adults. One thing God loves is, God loves an honorable young man. And when you're honorable, he says, if you're faithful over a few things, like the little things, if you do little things, he said, I can now bless you with big things. But if you don't take care of little things, how are you going to take care of big things? You can't. It's like being a basketball player, you're just doing what I'm getting you and I'm pushing you. People think it's a waste of time. When the basketball game, you're drunk and you're moving. You got bodies flying everywhere. People hitting you. You got to be on balance, under control. You can't be crying foul, ooch, ouch, stop. You got to keep playing. Well, life is the same way. Sometimes you ain't got no money. Sometimes you ain't got no money. Sometimes you ain't got the shoes you want. Sometimes you ain't go to the camp you want to go to. There yeah, many times life going to hit you and it wants you to quit or do something crazy. I'm here to tell you don't do that. Stay with the plan God has for your life, and here's the guarantee. He promises that if you live an honorable life, an honorable according to his word, that he guarantees the blessing. Education can't guarantee the blessing. Your hard work cannot guarantee the blessing. There are plenty of people who work hard who are not making it, but they work hard. You make it by allowing yourself to be transformed from the inside out and become a person who will be a blessing to another person in a country, a nation or a world. The way you change a country and the world is one person at a time. You don't change everybody. I'm here speaking to all of you. All of you won't receive what I'm saying, but one of you will. And if one of you receive it, then my trip was not in vain. If not somebody sees life differently than they understand. That you were created for something great. Though your circumstances may not say that right now, it doesn't change the fact you created for something great. Anybody ever seen how a butterfly is made? Because I get ready to close. We all just see the butterfly, right? Well, the butterfly starts out as a caterpillar, right? Everybody seen a caterpillar? The caterpillar just crawls along the ground slowly. And a caterpillar for many months, all he does is eat. He eats, he eats leaves, he eats all kinds of stuff. If he's eating, because soon he's going to go into what they call a cocoon or a larva. And inside this larva, his whole body is there, and he goes through a transformation where the liquid in his body dissolves his whole body. He becomes a liquid. He's being transformed. Now, this is away from human eyes. We don't see it. But scientific research shows it. So at an appointed time, his wings are being formed, body is being formed, he's being changed into a beautiful butterfly away from the eyes of human beings. That's the same thing with you and I. When you live right, it looks like nothing is happening. But we serve a God who loves you so much and created you perfectly the way you are that there's nobody else like you on the whole way. There's nobody who has the same plan you have. Nobody has the same purpose. Your job is to live a righteous life and allow God to help you make righteous choices in an unrighteous world that wants you to do unrighteous things and not count the cost of the consequences that's going to happen after you make that mistake. And you think you get away with it. But God says, I see that, I see everything. I'm not pleased with that. So just like there are natural laws, there are spiritual laws that if you break them, there's a consequence. God's not asking you to be perfect. He's asking you to trust him. It's not religion. I'm not telling you to be a Catholic. I'm not telling you to be Pentecostal. I'm not telling you to be Baptist. I'm telling you to have a relationship 
with your creator and find out why he created you. Find out your place in the world. Because it's already waiting on you. He already got your place set. That's why he gave you the gift you had and put you in the world the day you were put in the world, the year you were put in the world. Now he gets you ready for the place. How do I know? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 25 and 2, that it is the glory of God to conceal with it. God hides it. But he said it's the honor of kings and queens to search out of it. So it's my job to find out why God made me the way he made me. That's a personal thing. And I want to encourage each and every one of you before I get ready to go, and I'm going to pray for you and pray a blessing over your life, because you are blessed. You're not blessed because you have stuff. I have plenty of friends and people who are millionaires, cars, houses, clothes. They cheat on their wife. The kids don't speak to them. They're terrible people. They may or may not sign autographs. They may or may speak to you one day, and the next day they don't. Why? Because they with your face. So that makes you think you're better than someone else? No. No, no, no. What makes you rich is when you're content in where you are, but staying positive and hopeful for where you can go. There are no limits. The world says the sky is the limit. God created the sky. There's no limit in that. There's limits in you. There's limits in me. There's limits in the world. And from what I understand, there are limits in your country. But you know what? You don't have to be limited if you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Because he said, your gift will make room for you. How many people in here inside of you? You feel like you were created to do something special and great. Raise your hand. Did you feel that way? Seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm being very serious. Like, it starts with having a feeling. You don't even know what that feeling is. You don't know how to satisfy it. But you feel, your circumstances say, no, you ain't created for nothing great. It's going to always be this way. You look at your neighborhood, you look at the people around them. But you got to have something so much more to keep you putting one step in front of the other to become the butterfly who comes out of the cocoon, who's been hidden away from human eye. We had a great camp today. We'll have a great day tomorrow. We're going to continue to encourage you. We're going to continue to push you. Continue to challenge you. Because guess what? If you're going to make it, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. You got a lot of people that don't want you to be successful because they chose them not to be. You got a lot of circumstances that's going to come and look like they're to destroy you, but they're only to develop you. Huh? Look back, but it's good. My prayer for all you young people is that you will dare to be the generation that God can use to take your country to a level that it's never been before. That one of you will say yes to be the man or woman that will embrace God's love and share that love with everybody else and turn your country upside down. It can be done. And God's going to do it. If he don't use you, he's going to use somebody. Why not you? Amen? Let's pray. How are you here? Dear God, on Heavenly Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for these young people. I thank you for their hearts. I thank you for their participation in the camp today. I thank you for their ear to listen. I ask right now that you water the seeds that you have placed on the inside of them. Only you know their silent prayers at night. You know their concerns. You know their fears. You know the challenges they face going to and fro home, to and fro in school. You know everything because you're omnipotent. You're all knowing. You know the beginning from the end, the end from the beginning. You planned it all. I just ask right now that you bless them. Give them peace. Give them hope. And encourage them. Build them up on every side. Supply all their needs. Challenge them to dare to be great. Don't be normal. Don't just settle. Go way outside the comfort zone and the norm. And may this all be done for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You got to mean that, though. No, seriously, you got to mean it because your life will say, I'm not blessed. You're not blessed because you have stuff. You're blessed because you know today is just one day in your whole journey. And your life will change tomorrow. You never thought you'd meet me. And I ain't nobody, but I'm just saying.
I never thought I knew Jesus. That's how awesome God is. Rich called me out of the blue. I want you to go such and such with me. I go, really? Okay, well, I'm available. Let's do it. You see? Because somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody needs to know that you're special. Somebody needs to know you're powerful. And you're not special and powerful because you have things. It has nothing to do with playing in the NBA. You have everything to know that you're bad because God say you're bad. Don't judge me by what I look like. Amen? Amen. 